the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The blessed fourth week of Advent to everyone. And today we have the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, and he is the final saint in the uh, sanctoral uh, um, cycle until January 14th. So in, in if you have a, uh, your, your missile, it should be St. Thomas the Apostle on 21st today, and then no, nobody until the 14th of January. Uh, this is not because we don't celebrate any saints during that time, but because they are proper to the season. Uh, we celebrate the Feast of St. Stephen the day after Christmas, the Feast of the Holy Innocents, uh, and, and so on. Um, as, I keep, as I say frequently, that there's a whole separate sermon there on, on the placement of those saints, but um, uh, we will consider St. Thomas the Apostle today. And there's not a whole lot we know about him from history, or even from uh, legend, we could say, which is just history that wasn't recorded down very well. Um, uh, but he is uh, obviously one of one of the apostles of our Lord. He's mentioned several times in the gospel, and he has the, you know, kind of the this this unfair distinction of being labeled doubting Thomas, and that's even a term people use, like, oh, that guy's a real doubting Thomas, isn't somebody who's a skeptic. Um, and and this is really not a fair assessment of his character. Uh, because the Gospels let us know that he was bold and courageous. This is from John chapter 11. Uh, he was willing to go and die with Christ, right? They were on their way to go to Jerusalem and visit Lazarus. And they said, Lord, even now they're trying to kill you. And Thomas is like, no, let's go, let's go. So he was bold. He was not cowardly by any means. Um, and he was completely devoted to following Christ. Uh, this is in, in chapter John 14, uh, when our Lord is speaking to the apostles about his uh, departure to heaven. He says, um, in my Father's house there are many mansions, and I go and I shall prepare a place for you, and I will come again, and I will take you to myself. And he says, and whither I go, uh, and whither I go you know, and the way you know. And this is opposed to what he said to the Pharisees. Our, our Lord said to the Pharisees, where I'm going you cannot come. But now he tells his apostles, uh, you shall come, I myself will come and take you. And he says, where I go you know, and the way you know. And now Thomas, this is where Thomas's uh, um, uh, comment comes in. He says, Lord. We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And then our Lord says those absolutely beautiful words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Um, so, so Thomas was absolutely devoted to following Christ. He, he, he was absolutely serious. He wanted to follow Christ. And, you know, if, if you're familiar with the temperaments at all, um, we can see that um, it's, it's been I don't know, kind of observed that, that uh, Thomas had more of the phlegmatic temperament which is very steady, which can be very courageous. Uh, he was not um, uh, which he extroverted about it like St. Peter was, or, or rash, or anything of, of this nature, um, uh, tempestuous. But he was very sincere. He was very bold and uh, absolutely, completely loyal. And that, that's one of those, those traits of, um, well, the, the melancholic and the phlegmatic temperament is as, uh, kind of both. They have a, a great loyalty and a great constancy, a great steadfastness. Um, but also, they are very logical, and they want to see proof. If they're going to believe something, you, you had better be convincing. <laughs> Otherwise, they're not going to believe you. Uh, that's a very phlegmatic temperament. Right? They're, they're not taken in by flashy, um, how do you say, like um, great-sounding arguments or promises or, oh, isn't this wonderful? They're like, yeah, right, I'll see it when I, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, that, that's a classic temperamental quality. And so that is exactly what St. Thomas uh, displays. Right, with, with his doubting our Lord, which we'll talk about at length. Uh, but, but Thomas uh, proves his willingness and eagerness to follow uh, Christ the Lord um, anywhere and everywhere. Uh, by after the death and resurrection of Christ, he got India, the Far East. And so he goes there. He doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know the culture. He doesn't know none, none of the apostles. I mean, they don't know anything of this. And yet they went. And so uh, Thomas traveled to, uh, to India and he evangelized. And Thomas's Catechism lasted 1,500 years, right? When the missionaries, the Portuguese missionaries began arriving in these lands, uh, they found groups of believers, Catholics. Well, I mean, they weren't Catholic, they, they, but they understood the faith. And they understood, all right, you're sure, yeah, salvation, Christ our Lord, the Blessed Virgin. They, they knew all these things. It's like, how did you know this? And they said, Thomas. St. Francis Xavier visited the tomb of St. Thomas the Apostle on his missionary journeys in India. Uh, and so that's, that is historical proof that, as I mentioned, the legends are not false. The legends are not made-up stories. It's just history that has been passed on orally, just like 
you know, the, the creation account was passed on, and then Moses finally wrote it down. Um, so, you know, going back to, to the, 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 the St. Thomas supposed a d- denial of our Lord. I've heard this before. Oh, St. Thomas doubted our Lord. He, did not, he didn't deny our Lord. Um, or it, rather, he didn't deny the Lord's resurrection, rather. Um, you know, Thomas, he didn't doubt our Lord. He doubted the other apostles, right? Now, every apostle doubted Christ. They all disbelieved the words of Christ when he said, uh, on the third day, I will rise again. Like, nobody believed it. Nobody knew it. Nobody understood it. Even the women at the tomb, you know, were, were incredulous. Uh, that's why they went to the tomb to anoint him in the first place, because they didn't believe in the resurrection either. So the women themselves uh, rushed back and told the apostles, and none of the apostles believed the women. I mean, even Peter and John, they ran to the tomb. They were still wondering. Uh, so the apostles didn't believe the women. The apostles didn't believe our Lord until the apostles saw our Lord for themselves in the flesh. Then they believed. Guess who didn't see our Lord in the flesh? St. Thomas. So he shows up later, and the apostles say, oh, we've seen the Lord. And he says, I'm not, I don't believe you. I didn't believe the women. You didn't believe the women. And now I'm not believing you. So there's, there's no doubting of our Lord anywhere here. I mean, no, no more than anybody else. So let's, let's kind of set, set the stage there. Um, so St. Thomas, however, and this is very consistent with his temperament, right, with his personality. And um, we could say that this is precisely because St. Thomas loved our Lord so much, uh, precisely because he was, St. Thomas was so bold, he would not believe until he had evidence beyond the shadow of a doubt. Because if it were true that Christ actually was risen from the dead, that changed everything. I, that, 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 that is, if that is true, then the entire world, it just completely changes. And that's, that's what a bold man does, that's what a man of courage or a woman of courage does. They, they change their entire life on the certainty of great truths. And this is St. Thomas. So, so for him, the stakes were too high to believe lightly. And, and this is an excellent apologetics um, point. For the faith, in that the accusation is leveled that uh, Christ didn't really rise from the dead. The apostles imagined that they had seen our Lord, that their love for him uh, kind of addled their minds, and they they convinced themselves through this this delusional loving of their their Savior that they really had seen him. And this is absolute proof to the contrary. The apostles were not so eager to see our Lord they imagined it. They wouldn't believe, uh, they would not believe against all evidence pointing towards it. They refused to believe. They couldn't believe. I mean, Peter and John, if they were delusional, when they went to the tomb and found it empty, they would have gone proclaiming, here it is, he's risen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It, it, it's the absolute opposite. Everything's the opposite of what, um, if people were making this up, that's exactly the kind of stuff that they would think about, the, the accusations, I mean. They, they would, um, if you're going to make this up, oh, the apostles never doubted, they believed the whole time, they just knew he was going to rise again. You know, that's how people who are faking it write stories. Uh, the apostles, it shows their humility in that they wrote exactly what happened, and that's real life. <laughs> this, this is how people would react to something that they just they cannot believe and are forced to believe by fact itself. And so, this, the, and so Thomas is kind of like, I don't know, how, can you, how do you say that? Like the, um, the, the, the nail in the coffin against that argument of delusion is that he, he, he would not believe until not only had he seen our Lord, but he says, until I say, touch him. I put my fingers in the wounds in his hands and in his side. Until that, I will not believe. So, uh, and, and this is, this is a, a point made by St. Gregory the Great. This is in the Matins readings for today. He says that this didn't happen by accident. It was no accident that St. Thomas was not present with the other apostles. God wanted this to be here. He wanted St. Thomas not to believe until he had uh, felt and touched so that we would not have just eyewitnesses, but hand witnesses, right? Yeah, people who had not just seen and heard our Lord, but touched him. You know, he was flesh and blood. He, he, he ate the fish after his resurrection. St. Thomas touched him. So he's proving the, the uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the, the, the physicality of the resurrection, the absolute truth of the resurrection. Because it, that's, that's the central truth. As St. Paul says, if Christ is not raised from the dead, we are the most pitiable of men. The whole of everything, the whole of the Catholic Church is, is founded on the fulcrum of the resurrection. And so St. Thomas the Apostle plays a very important role in proving the facticity of it. And uh, he, still, he still receives the benefit of faith. And this is, again, this is that sermon from St. Gregory the Great. Because, as St. Gregory points out, faith is the substance of things not seen. Oh, I mean, that's St. Paul, but Gregory uh, reminds us of it. Uh, faith is a substance of things not seen. But all the apostles saw Christ. But they only saw the man Christ. They had still to believe 
in his Godhead, which nobody could see. Even the angels can't see the Godhead without a super added um, ability to their uh, nature, right? Because God is above all, all, all natures, angelic or human. So St. Thomas says, after he touches Christ, after he t- sees and touches and hears the man Christ, he says, my Lord and my God. So he still has the benefit of believing in what he couldn't see. And that, and that is the divinity of Christ. And all the apostles had that, um, uh, um, um, that, that, that benefit. Uh, but, but we, right, we have the benefit of both. We believe entirely based on faith because we haven't seen our Lord. We weren't there speaking and talking with him. Uh, but we believe on the testimony of those who were. Uh, so we give assent, we, we give belief to those eyewitnesses, but we, we still get that benefit. But it, it is very, very important to, to recall that in that our, our, um, our belief is, as I mentioned, based on that eyewitness testimony. There were people who did see and speak and touch and feel and live with Christ when he was on earth. And, and, that, and that has just been attested to uh, in, in so many ways and so many times through not just the Gospels, of course, but history, but tradition, the, the annals of the Romans, historical records from other, other the pagans, n- none of them doubt the, the fact, factual evidence of, of Christ. And so it is a, a great joy for us today to celebrate the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, the heroic Apostle of Christ, unshakable in his faith, unshakable in his love and devotion to our Lord. Uh, so, you know, his absence from that first vision of the Apostles, his subsequent profession of belief is a gift of God to the church. It's a gift of God to us. And, and it is a testimony of, as I mentioned, his, his absolute um, loyalty to Christ, is that if this is true, I'm giving up everything. Like, absolutely, this, this just completely changes the game. And so, you know, maybe that's something that we could think about, right? If what the Catholic Church says is true, then what? What ought our behavior to be? Um, this is what should inspire us when we are receiving Holy Communion, when we're, our, when we're present at Mass or in the church. We need to have the faith of St. Thomas. We need to have that kind of logical mind of St. Thomas the Apostle. If this is true, then what should my behavior be? What should my dress be? What should my speech be? How should I behave? How should I act? What should I teach my children? What should I be thinking about? What should I change uh, in, in the rest of my life? You know, Now that I've left church and I've received the God of the universe, what does that mean? What are the consequences? Right? That, that, that's what St. Thomas the Apostle, his, his temperament invites us to, right? is consider those things. And, and the church, you know, she places his words uh, as we look at the host elevated during the consecration, my Lord and my God. Those are the words of St. Thomas the Apostle, right? the words of faith. Uh, so, so we have uh, his example, we have his, his, the example of his faith, of his love, and let's stir that up. right? When, when, we, when we say that, when we look at that host, the elevated host during Mass, let's remember St. Thomas the Apostle and thank him, right? Thank him for his um, uh, demanding proof so that God could give that to us to make our faith more unshakable uh, in, in his, the, the reality of his resurrection uh, and the reality of his love, uh, our salvation. Well, St. Thomas the Apostle, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.